Okay, here we're going to graph a rational function by using zeros and vertical asymptotes to help us uh, to help us kind of pick out some important features, and then we'll also just plot a few extra points to see what happens. So the first thing I'm going to do is well find the zeros and vertical asymptotes, and to do that, I'm going to I'm going to factor the numerator and the denominator. There's really nothing to do in the denominator, uh, but the numerator is a quadratic. So since the coefficient of x squared is positive 1, for these types we just need two numbers that multiply to negative 10 but add to negative 3. I think positive 2 and negative 5 would do that. Okay, so in this case, uh, I'm kind of asking myself now, are there any common factors that we can eliminate? And the answer is no. Um, so to figure out the zeros, what we'll do is we'll just take the numerator and set that equal to zero. Well, if we set each factor equal to zero, we'll get x equals negative two, will be a zero from our first factor, and then we'll get x equals positive five, will be a zero from our second factor. Okay, and then let's see, uh, to figure out the vertical asymptote, we'll take the denominator and set that equal to zero. Well, in this case, I can subtract 5 from both sides. And hey, now I've got my vertical asymptote. All right, so again, just a very little rough sketch here. So let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. We said our vertical asymptote occurred here at negative 5. So we'll indicate that with a dashed line. I'm even going to write that this is x equals negative 5. So x-axis, y-axis, we said our x-intercepts occurred at negative 2 and positive 5. So let's see, there's x equals negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, well, 5, I already counted that off, that's why I did it. And, okay, so now we've got, you know, some important points. What I'm going to do now is simply just, again, just uh, plot some extra points. So the values... Some, some values that I'm going to use. I'm going to take some points, you know, kind of around the, uh, you know, the, the zeros and also the vertical asymptote. So I'm going to fill it in. Again, you know, a very rough sketch here. So X and Y, let's see. So maybe I'll plug in, um, you know, maybe we'll plug in negative 3. Maybe I'll plug in negative 1. Let's see, maybe I'll plug in. We can always plug in X equals 0. That's not a, you know, a super hard value to calculate. Um, and then we can plug in x equals 4, x equals 6. Maybe we'll do one more. Maybe we can do x equals negative 6 as well. Okay, so obviously not completely in order here, but almost. So let's, uh, let's go back to our function here. And now it's just going to be some, some arithmetic. We could plug it back either into the original function, obviously, or we could plug it into the factored form. In general, I like to plug stuff into the factored form. It's a little bit easier to compute. Okay, so the only exception is when I plug in 0. So notice when we plug in 0, if we plug 0 into our function, the first two terms will be 0. Uh, that'll be 0, so we'll be left with negative 10 over 5. Negative 10 over 5 will be negative 2. All right, so now I'm going to plug everything else into uh, where I have it factored. So f of negative 3, that's going to give us, well, negative 3 plus 2. So I'll write the first one out, and the next one will do a little bit faster. And then 5 plus negative 3. So let's see. We've got negative 3 plus 2, which is negative 1. We have negative 3 minus 5, which is negative 8. Uh, 5 plus negative 3 will give us 2. We have a negative 1 times a negative 8, which will give us 8 over 2, which will leave us with 4. Okay, so we know negative 3 comma 4 is on the graph. We'll, we'll put all these on there in just a second. So next we've got f of negative 1. Let's squeeze everything in here. So let's see, we've got f of negative 1. So let's see, negative 1 plus 2 will be 1. Negative 1 minus 5 will be negative 6. Negative one, 5 plus negative 1, well, that'll be 4. So that'll be negative 6 over 4. 
or negative 3 over 2. Okay, so let's see, let's plug in positive 4. So if we plug in 4, 4 plus 2 is 6. 4 minus 5 will be negative 1. 5 plus 4, let's see, so 5 plus 4 will be 9. And that'll be negative 6 over 9, or negative 2 thirds. All right, let's keep going here. Let's plug in 6. So if we plug in 6, 6 plus 2 is 8. 6 minus 5 is 1. 5 plus 6 is 11. So we get 8 over 11. And maybe one more point here. Let's plug in a negative 6. So f of negative 6. Negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. Negative 6 minus 5 will be negative 11. And let's see, 5 plus negative 6, that's going to be negative 1. This will be positive 44 over negative 1, which will be negative 44. All right, so now, last but not least, let's just kind of use these points to help us sketch a little bit better graph. Some of these, obviously, are probably not going to fit on here due to the scale, but we can, I think, get most of them on here. So we set at negative 3, we're up here at 1, 2, 3, 4, so there's negative 3, 4, so I'll kind of connect the dots there a little bit. Notice this is a vertical, this vertical asymptote, it says the graph either is going to have to get, you know, kind of arbitrarily close to it and go to positive infinity, or go down to negative infinity. We know it can't go to negative infinity because then there would have to be another x-intercept, and we've already found all the x-intercepts. They only occur at negative 2 and 5. So that kind of tells me it's got to keep going up, 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 up. So again, kind of a, you know, I don't think it, it should have quite that little shape. It should be a little smoother. But that's the idea. It's going off to positive uh, infinity. So we set at negative 1. We're at negative 3 halves, so we're roughly down there. At 0, we're at negative 2, so we'll play connect the dots. We said by the time we're at positive 4, we're at negative 2 thirds, so we're getting closer. So it's going to go through and uh, touch at, uh, at x equals uh, 5. And then we said once we get to positive 6, uh, we're now going to be at positive 8 over 11. And then I think it's going to just keep getting larger and larger and larger. Let's look at one other. So we said if we plug in negative 6, we're down here at negative 44. So, okay, we can't really get that value down there, but it's way down there. So to me, it says the graph would have to be spiking down to negative infinity. Um, and then, you know, I think I'm just going to kind of leave it, maybe leave it like that. You know, there's, there's uh, you know, we could always figure out sort of more of what's happening to the left of this graph. And, you could do that also by thinking about if there are any horizontal asymptotes. We'll do that in a different example. And you can always just plot some more points to figure out what's going on. But to the left of the asymptote, it's going, it's uh, spiking down towards negative infinity. And then it sort of has this sort of, uh, I wouldn't, you know, I, I can't even really say that it sort of has a U-shape because it could be doing some slightly more complicated things through there. I don't know for sure just by plotting points. But, you know, this is a good, relatively uh, simple graph. So, again, you can always plug in negative 7, negative 8, negative 9, etc., um, and figure out what happens as you go, in a, as you go towards negative infinity. Um, it looks like, to me, um, you know, a, a, as that would happen, I think it's going to actually just start spiking down towards negative infinity. So... The graph should be doing something like that. You, you could always find the peak, you know, kind of the, the, what we would call local maximum on this side. But, again, rough sketch. We've got the vertical asymptote. We've got the zeros. We plotted some points. If you want a better graph, there's not much you can do now other than to plot more points.